Welcome to the Basics series. I've looked at several engineering circuit analysis textbooks and found the formulas for capacitive and inductive reactants are simply presented with no explanation of where they came from. If you're like me, I accepted them at face value. That's not satisfying to me, so I derived them from the very grassroots of electrical engineering. One of my videos, called Cascaded Amplifier Cutoff Frequency, uses the reactants formulas to compute the correct interstage coupling capacitors. What is reactants? In electrical circuits, reactance is the opposition presented to alternating current by inductance and capacitance. Along with the resistance, it is one of the two elements of impedance. However, while both elements involve transfer of electrical energy, no dissipation of electrical energy as heat occurs in reactants. Instead, the reactant stores energy until a quarter cycle later, and then the energy is returned to the circuit. Greater reactants, the smaller the current, for the same applied voltage changes sufficiently to trigger a change. The symbol for reactants is X and has a subscript C for capacitive reactants and the subscript L for the inductive reactants. Here's the Wikipedia page for capacitance. A capacitor is simply a dielectric sandwich between two conductive plates. The plates will have a specific area and separation between the plates. The charge on the plates will create an electric field. The capacitance C is equal to the charge Q over the voltage across it V. One farad can be described as the capacitance which stores one Coulomb charge across a potential difference of one volt. Therefore, one farad is equal to one Coulomb of charge over one volt. Here's the Wikipedia page for electric current. In the International System of Units, electric current is expressed in units of ampere, which is equal to 1 coulomb per second. The letter I is used for current, which is the charge Q over time T. As you have seen in many of my other videos, I made a pledge to make sure there are no math steps left behind. As stated, we need to determine the reactance, which is the opposition presented to the alternating current. Consider a resistor across an AC sinusoidal voltage source. If you're not familiar with that formula, check out the formula for the periodic sinusoid video. The current I from Ohm's law is the voltage V over the resistance R. And of course, the resistance is the voltage over the current. Now consider a capacitor across an AC sinusoidal voltage source. The current I is the voltage over the capacitive reactance X sub C. Therefore, the reactance is V over I. In the next few minutes, we will be doing an analysis to derive the reactance formulas, and we'll do so by rearranging the equations to be the reactance, which will be in the form of V over I. Before we can derive the capacitive reactance formula, we need the basic formula for the current in a capacitor. I brought forward the formulas we got from Wikipedia. We want the change of current due to the change in voltage. So I'll make the V lowercase for a changing variable, rearranged to solve for the charge Q. Then we want the derivative or rate of change of Q and the rate of change of voltage. Bringing down the formula for current, I is charge Q over time T. We want the rate of change or the derivative of the charge over time. We replace dQ over dT with C times dV dT. And there we have it, that standard equation for current in a capacitor. You will often see this in textbooks also without any explanation of where it came from. Now let's move forward to deriving the formula for capacitive reactants. We already stated that the reactance was the opposition to an alternating current. Here's the formula for a sinusoidal voltage source. Omega is 2 pi times the frequency. We then replace the V with the sinusoidal voltage source. Recall that the derivative of sine of x is the cosine of x. That's so simple. Just replace the sine with cosine. Wrong. That's not the sine of x. It's a sine of x and a coefficient. 
Recall from calculus the chain rule. It's a formula that expresses the derivative of the composition of two of two differentiable functions. F will be the sine of u, where u is omega t. We take the derivative of the sine of u and multiply it by the derivative of omega t. Let's work on the left side first. The derivative of sine of u is the cosine of u. Now substitute back omega t. Now let's work on the right hand side. Pull the constant omega out front. Putting them together we get the cosine of omega t times omega. Now pulling down the formula we had for current which becomes c times v max times the cosine of omega t times omega. Then is the current which we know is the cosine of omega t. Now you can see the current leads the voltage by pi over 2 or 90 degrees. For the reactants, we need to determine the maximum current, which we know happens at time equals zero. So when omega t is zero, the cosine of zero is one. That makes cosine of omega t go away, and we are left with omega cv max. Rearrange to solve for the voltage over current and replace omega with 2 pi f, and there's that famous capacitive reactance formula. Now let's talk about inductance. Here is a part of the Wikipedia page. An inductor is also called a coil, choke, or reactor. It's a passive two-terminal electrical component that stores energy in a magnetic field when an electric current flows through it. An inductor typically consists of insulated wire wound into a coil. When the electric current flowing through the coil changes, the time-varying magnetic field induces an electromotive force in the conductor described by Faraday's law of induction. According to Lin's law, the induced voltage has a polarity which opposes the change in current that created it. As a result, inductors oppose any changes in electrical current through them. Joseph Henry discovered the electromagnetic phenomena or self-inductance and the unit of inductance is the Henry named after him. The Henry symbol, H, is the unit of electrical inductance in the international system of units. If a current of one ampere flowing through a coil produces a flux linkage of one Weber term, that coil has a self-inductance of one Henry. The letter for inductance is L. Here's a coil of wire. When the current flows through the coil of wire, it creates a magnetic field. These are the lines of magnetic flux. Flux is represented by the uppercase Greek letter phi, or phi as some call it. It's equal to the product of inductance L and the current I. The more inductance, the more flux. The more current, the more flux. The voltage across the inductor is the rate of change of flux with time. Since flux is L times I, d phi can be replaced with L d I. And there we have the standard formula for the voltage in an inductor, which is L di dt. We first replace the voltage as a function of time with a sinusoidal voltage source. First rearrange to solve for di and get di on the left. Then integrate both sides. Move the constant Vmax over L out front. Again, since the sine function has a coefficient to time, which is omega, we use the chain rule for differentiating. But for integrating, we need the u-substitution method. It can be loosely thought as a chain rule backwards. u is omega t. Then take the derivative, rearrange to solve for dt, and bring back the sine of u. Bring the constant 1 over omega out front. The common integral of sine is negative cosine. Integrating this gives 1 over omega times negative cosine omega t. Bringing Vm over omega L, we get the current is V max over omega L times the negative cosine of omega t. Here's a chart of the inductor voltage. Since the current is negative cosine omega t, the current lags the voltage by pi over 2, or 90 degrees, the opposite of the capacitor. Now to find the max current, when omega t is 0, the negative cosine of 0 is negative 1. 
plugging in the negative one gives us the current as V max over omega L. Reactance X is V over I. X sub L is omega L. Putting two pi F for omega, we finally get our inductive reactance formula. X sub L equals two pi F L. Thanks for watching. Please click the like, subscribe, and notification bell 